All right, fuel rail is out. Here's what we're left with. Minus a couple of injectors still inside the, uh, the manifold there. Put these over here. These are perfectly good, so I'm gonna save them. Uh, here's what we got. This is the factory fuel rail. As you can see, it's a huge trombone looking thing. Um, due to the extensive design of um, these fuel rails, they were prone to a lot of heat soak, especially in hotter climates, which is why they had that injector cooling fan. So now I'm just gonna show you guys how to uh, swap over the injector hardware here. So of course, I'm gonna take a new injector out. Uh, make sure it looks good. Now these are uh, OEM turbo inje injectors. They're the uh, uh, JEX, uh, J-E-C-E -E original hardware. Um, it's just that they've been rebuilt and they have a bit of a cheap respray here. Um, but they are genuine injectors, first and foremost. So we have a new um, O-ring for the mount here. And a new O-ring fitting that goes into the intake manifold. Obviously does not come with the mounting hardware, so we're going to have to reuse that from uh, the old injectors. Uh, so basically, I have an old injector here. Remove all the seals. Um, the O-ring for the manifold has already been removed. Then we kind of remove this mount, and we have a compression O-ring fitting sort of thing here that we'll need to kind of pry out with a screwdriver. Uh, obviously, for these, I have new ones, so I'm not worried about tearing them up. So I'm just going to kind of get under there and then just kind of walk it off of its fitting like this. Take that off, discard it, take the bracket off. Then on the new injector here, we're going to put the bracket on first, actually this way. We're gonna have, then we're going to go ahead and put the uh, O-ring on, mounting O-ring. Not sure what the technical name is. May need to use a little lube, but might not at the same time, depending upon who your manufacturer is and how stiff your seals are. And then we're going to place the boot on over here, the insulator, whatever you want to call it. And we have two different sets of seals here. We have the O-ring that fits into inside of the port on the manifold. Got this other strange stepped seal. Now this did not come with new stepped seals that kind of sit on the slip here, but luckily these old ones are still in good shape despite being a little dirty. So uh, I'm not really sure what the purpose is, but you know I'm going to put them on the same way I remove them. So I'm just going to kind of fit this over the little ridge here best I can. Then the manifold O-ring, and that is it. That is how you assemble um, the hardware for the uh, new injectors. So now all that's left to do is put them into the engine. All right, let's get these injectors in. Using a flare tool and a uh, little handheld pipe or steel line bending tool, which broke with just uh, the force out of my hands, I uh, got my first hard line kind of mocked up. This is the one that will wrap around the head. As you can see, this will sit right like this. Well, right like this, technically, once it's in, but it'll be uh, very close to how it was. Uh, when it was stock, which is uh, exactly what I want. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start swapping out the uh, distributor shaft and uh, oil pump. So I have the stock distributor off already. It's just uh, literally one screw for the uh, the timing set holds the whole assembly in place. Um, and the whole unit just comes right off after you disconnect the electrical connectors and the uh, vacuum advance. And then um, down below is the oil pump, which I will show you here in a sec. Alright, now underneath the front of the engine, I got the uh, splash pan removed so you can see. 
Uh, this is the oil pump here. It sits uh, right above the sway bar and on the passenger side front of the engine underneath the alternator. So there's four bolts, 12 millimeters to secure this to the block. I'll be uh, removing those and uh, probably a little bit of spillage and uh, then uh, we'll uh, take the shaft out. Let's see here. It shouldn't be too tight. Nope, that's good. There we go. Yank this thing out. Oh, here we go. Alright. There's that. And here is the distributor shaft. Now here for a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm sure now you can tell why you need to swap the whole assembly over. Because as you can see, the uh, spindle inputs are uh, totally different for each distributor. That's why you have to swap these out. Otherwise, uh, they're, they're exactly the same. They fit into each oil pump each way and teeth are the same and they're the same length and all that. It's just the, uh, the inputs here into the distributor that are different. Well, so I did a little bit of a test fit. And apparently, with this non-turbo manifold heater line, the distributor cap will not sit in flush. It won't clear that part. So I had to remove that, which is not a big deal since this whole idle air control valve system won't be functional anyway. And uh, for that, I gotta drain half of the coolant out of the engine um, to remove it, basically. So that's what's going on now. Okay, so we got the uh, turbo shaft in. Um, without the, the without the oil pump in place, it would just fall out. So I have a pair of uh, needle nose vice grips, kind of holding it in position so it doesn't slip out. I got it lined up with this mark I made on the radiator hose as best as I could, and that's basically what I made with the other distributor. It's a little hard to tell because, um, as I'm going to show you here, it fell down somewhere. Hold on. The two distributors sit differently because on the non-turbo versions, you have this uh, bracket here that uh, utilizes this one screw um, to adjust for timing and to mount the distributor. This doesn't. This mounts directly to the front cover. Um, so it, like I said, it sits a little differently. It sits lower. Um, so it is kind of hard to tell um, for that reason. Um, but uh, now what we're going to do is just uh, put the new oil pump on and uh, put the distributor on. On this kind of oil pump, basically what you do is you stick a flathead screwdriver into the uh, drive, pour oil in the sump end, and you turn it counterclockwise, and you can see it's pumping oil pretty good. Catch it before it spills. Um, and uh, yeah, basically you work it until all the air is out of it, which I did. And then you are ready to put it in the car. And uh, boom, the shiny new Hitachi turbo automatic oil pump is in the engine. All right, so now we can fit the turbo distributor in place. There we go, very nice. And now the two screws that hold it in place which we're not going to tighten these down all the way just yet because this also effectively asks, acts as a timing adjustment even though supposedly on the factory 280ZX turbos you can only change the timing either 5 degrees more advanced or 5 degrees uh, less retarded. So that's interesting. And we are set. Turbo ignition system and uh, I guess lubrication system in a way, uh, is in place. Now uh, one last thing I'm going to do tonight is uh, install the uh, throttle position sensor that has been supplied in the kit. This is a uh, 240SX S13 sensor, like I mentioned earlier. And with a little bit of an adapter plate, it fits right in place. Very simple, just uh, two screws on the stock one as well as the aftermarket one. Unscrew them, 
and uh, the sensor pops right out. Boom. Okay, back at it. Stock one on with the bracket. Luckily it has these extended screws on here so you can even hand tighten them. Which is quite nice. Then you have a center adjustment as well, which uh, we will set once we fire the car up. Because we got to make sure 100% is 100% and 0% is 0% in the ECU. So we're here on day three of the Mega Squirt conversion. Um, I have a few things done here, as you'll see. Um, I got most of the wiring in place. As you can see, I have it run along here. I got the hood latch back in place with the loom going under it uh, per specification. Main harness ground here. We have another ground on the other side for the cylinder head temperature sensor, as well as its own connector. And over here, I've got all the hardware in place. Um, as you saw, you know, we got the whole uh, turbo distributor system in. I'm in all the sensors and I'm just kind of plugging everything in now. So we got the TPMS plugged in, and we got the coil plugged in, uh, and the crank angle sensor is in, and uh, the my janky jerry rig temporary <laughs> uh, intake air temperature, temperature, not temperature, temperature <laughs> control sensor in. And now what I have to do is just uh, wire up, well not wire up, but route up the fuel system. Um, like I said, I broke my pipe bendy tool so I'm gonna have to just run a bunch of hose for now and then just not drive it until it's hard line but um, that and uh, plugging the ECU in um, and I think I can start it without the wideband I think it'll at least fire um, so we're gonna see if we got power to the pump first off so if you want to come around this way oh. all right Oh, you know what? What? <laughs> the fuel pump ground is not it. Put this in here. Hopefully, not get friggin' shocked. All right. Well, it's gonna ground through the fucking carpet, so it should be pretty interesting. Now, <laughs> let's see if we got fuel pump. Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's power it a few times. We'll check for leaks. I like how it's still timed. Like I thought it would just run 100%. Let's check for leaks. Look for any moisture. There should be no moistness around any fuel areas. Check each injector, make sure there's nothing. Okay, I don't know. Let's, let's see if it'll fire up. Let's see what happens. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, oh I heard something. Might be still air in the system. Give it a little gas. Oh, oh God, come on. Have a we have a water leak. Well, shit, it fires up and it runs. Well, that's <laughs> something. Okay, we're approaching the uh, the final few steps into getting this thing back on the road again. Uh, it is day four. Uh, the uh, test fire on day three was a success. Um, it fired up, ran on all six, and um, yeah, it was getting fuel and spark. Um, obviously, it will need to be tuned, and there are still a few things that need to be hooked up. But um, great start so far. So today basically what we'll be doing is uh, just basically putting the final touches on the kit itself, uh, like hooking up the uh, Y-Band O2 sensor, uh, hopefully making an adapter for the uh, intake air temperature sensor, and uh, basically cleaning everything up and putting things back where they should be. Um, so basically I'm on the step right now where I'm gonna be hooking that Y-Band up. See the instructions here, it's pointing to a Ah, right here. This is the signal 
for the wideband O2 that's going to be going to the ECU uh, from the uh, sensor unit itself. All right, so uh, obviously this is the uh, Glow Shift uh, wideband AFR kit that I got. Um, it comes with all the necessities: uh, plenty of wiring, a connection for the O2 sensor, um, you know, bezel ring, of course, the controller itself, wiring. It even comes with a little mounting kit and uh, a bung. However, luckily, amazingly, to my surprise, the uh, Bosch O2 sensor that came with it threads right into the factory manifold, which is great. Honestly, it saves a lot of trouble pulling the damn manifold off and you know, getting it to a shop and getting a new bung in it. So that's that's great. But yeah, this is what we're working with here. So uh, we're gonna install this, and then once everything is live, it should send an accurate signal to the ECU, and we'll get it running good. And then uh, from there, I guess we'll uh, plug in my laptop and uh, see what kind of tune we got on it. So what I've done here is I've taken the main power leads, and I've basically wired them into the existing ignition harness. Because you do have, obviously, uh, one for ignition on, one for constant power, and uh, obviously a ground, and then we have this one which is unused. This is for the uh, headlight harness, um, which is uh, which will basically uh, create a dimming effect on the gauge so it doesn't blind you at night. Um, I mean, my main issue here is just finding out what the hell to do with all these, all these wires, because I mean... I just don't know where I'm going to put this in, to be honest. Uh, but as you can see here, if I turn it on, as you can see, it powers up and everything. Of course, it does have to go through a 30-second, uh, I guess, self-check process before it gives you live readings. But uh, it does work and everything. I just have to uh, figure out where I'm going to put all this stuff. All right, so I decided I'm just going to tuck all of this uh, wideband stuff underneath the brake booster for now. Yeah, I mean, that's that's as low as it goes, really, 10.0. So we're running basically between, I've seen 10, point, 10 flat and 10.3 to 1. So hopefully when it warms up, uh, we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to see, uh, you know, where we're at. So basically when you connect uh, your tuner for the first time, um, you need to load a bunch of basic parameters into uh, the system. Uh, there's multiple values you need to put in place um, in order for it to kind of uh, set the proper standard for any future tuning. Um, so that's basically what I've done now. Now what I'm going to do is fire it up, let it warm up, see how it runs when warm, and then um, kind of look at everything here on the dash and, um, you know, see, basically see where we're at in terms of how the car is running.